hallowed be thy name. When I was a kid, my family took a trip to Gettysburg National Park. It's the site of one of the most decisive battles in the Civil War, and even as a kid, I was fascinated by the history. We were standing on the very ground where men had given their lives for the cause of freedom and for our nation. It was what took place on that ground that literally changed all of American history. Most people who visit have that same sense of meaning and respect. In fact, it wasn't long after the battle that President Lincoln stood near the same spot and delivered the Gettysburg Address. He told the crowd, We cannot hallow this ground. The brave men living and dead who struggled here have hallowed it far above our power to add or detract. That word hallowed is not one we use very often. It's reserved for that sacred feeling that Lincoln was trying to capture. To hallow something is to recognize its uniqueness, its sacredness, its meaning. That place is unlike others, it's holy ground, hallowed. Our memorized versions of the Lord's Prayer use just that word in the first request, hallowed be your name. You can call a battlefield hallowed, but what does it mean to hallow the name of God? And what does this first part of the prayer mean to pray it? In the original language, it comes through more clearly. It's a request, not a formal way of addressing God, but a prayer offered in request. Father, let your name be hallowed. When we think about praying, we usually think about our requests. Most nights when I put my kids to bed, we pray, and usually they have things they want to pray about. Help me to have no bad dreams, help my friend who was sick today at school feel better, help me to get a hit in Little League game tomorrow. We know what it is to request things in prayer. It seems to come pretty naturally to us, but what does it mean that the first request of the Lord's Prayer is not for some possession or favor, but that God's name might be hallowed, that God's name might be taken more seriously? Before this prayer can get to its requests for forgiveness or bread or even to God's will to be done, it begins with a request that God might be taken more seriously in our lives, that his name might be more sacred and holy to us. You see, the problem is it's easy to say you believe in God and even easy to pray to God and at the same time not take him all that seriously. Prayer can too easily become a kind of insurance policy. I better pray just to hedge my bet, and who knows, maybe it'll work. No, the Lord's Prayer won't let us pray like that, won't let us go down that path. From the beginning, our position is not manipulation or formality. In whatever comes next, we must first begin with the sacredness and the holiness of God. We are in on something far, far greater than our own needs or even perspective. We begin by immersing ourselves in the seriousness of God. Once you realize that this is a request we routinely return to, it opens doors to that sacred seriousness in all of your life. We do not pray for his name to be hallowed and then go on about our own business. We set our business in the context of his reality. This request becomes central to every prayer we pray. When I wake up, let it be into your presence. As I prepare for the day, let it be for your purposes. As I work and carry out my tasks, let it be to your honor. When I get frustrated or anxious, let me remember your faithfulness, your presence. When I am tempted to sin, let me remember you are there for my escape. Don't let me be carried along by this world this day, but let me hallow your name be the sacred ground beneath my feet all day. All of this creation is hallowed ground, not just because some important event took place on it, but because this ground is where God and His Spirit have placed me in this moment. This ground is where I can call upon Him to lead me. This ground, by the power of His creation, is filled with the potential of new creation. Do not let me lose this perspective. Father, hallowed be your name every day and everywhere I go.